we will just wait for one or two minutes uh, actually few students are still joining after that uh, we'll start our lecture We'll start at five one. We'll start. okay so we can start now uh, because anyway this uh, video is recorded and will be uploaded on youtube so if any student miss it can watch it later on so this is abhishek thakur uh, from iit hyderabad i am a prime minister research scholar so i will be discussing problem solving questions a like problem solving lectures on these principles of signals and systems so basically uh, first of all can you please just text in the message like uh, are you in b tech or uh, like where are you studying in which year b tech which year because i will be taking class based on gate lectures question will be totally based on gate standards so if i will know the level of class like they are in b tech first year second year accordingly i will take questions okay surajit b tech third year remaining also can text Or if you want to speak, then you can speak by unmuting yourself. Because I want the lecture should be very interactive. Uh, yes, the lecture what is taught in NPTEL uh, that is that you can watch that will clear your basics. But here we will mostly solve the questions that is based on like that is coming in the previous year gate examination. Okay, B Tech second year. So just I want to know like uh, you are in which year of the BTEC course. After that, I will get to know that how much basics you have covered. Remaining also, can you please text? Okay. So yeah, this is a, a good time to start for gate examination preparation. I know like these courses are very important for gate uh, in like uh, signal system is one of the basic building block of electronics uh, and communication engineering for gate examination it will help you in other subjects also like communication system and itself from signal and system every year 10 marks question come in gate examination and that's why problem solving skills are required so today what we will do we will just go through some of the concepts uh, which is taught in the week one lecture uh, of Ajit Jagannatham sir and after that we will solve uh, some of the gate questions or uh, non gate question also that question like made by us so we will start okay so first we will see what is signal and uh, what is system so this subjects that is signal and system Here you can see two words are here. One is signal, one is system. So this means there is a system and there is a signal. What happened? Some signal xt is given to a system. Let's suppose this is h. And it may be h omega or ht whatever. And after that, uh, this system transforms this signal and gives the output yt. Okay. So what does system do? It transforms the signal that is input signal to produce output signal. Okay. 
so it can transform in any way we will see different kind of uh, systems uh, later on in this lecture so this is just a basic definition and i hope like you must have seen the uh, lectures you must have seen the lectures of week 1 so we will just discuss most of the questions from there And it will also cover your assignment question, uh, which is asked in the week one lecture, uh, like week one assignment. Uh, it will help you. So first, going with the first question. Uh, so you can see, and you can also just text your answer in the chat box, so that uh, I will be knowing that you guys are solving yourselves. That is really good. So let's suppose a signal is given x n, that is cos two pi k n by n. Here k is an integer. So it is asking this signal xn belongs to which of the following classes. So there are four options given. If you get the answer, you can write in the chat box. So as you can see, here k is an integer. So this signal is not a continuous signal. Like uh, this signal is just a sequence. Like for different k. It is a series of numbers like you can get cos 2 pi n by n and after that next series is 2 pi 2 n that is equal to 4 pi n by n. So this is a discrete signal. So option 1 is correct. Okay. Fine. And also you can see that this cos 2 pi k n by n is a periodic signal. So it will all the periodic signals are power signal you know this so option 2 and option 4 will be correct yeah correct surajit uh, option b is the correct that is 1 2 and 4 so we will see some of the concepts like based on uh, what is power signal what is energy signals and how to calculate the power and energy so that also i will discuss in this lecture to wait a minute and the video will be uploaded on youtube lecture so um, on youtube also so don't worry if you miss the starting part of the class you can watch it uh, later on youtube the link will be shared in the NPTEL portal itself. So before going, we will see energy and power signal because most of the questions are based on this only in the first assignment. And also in gate examination from basics of signal system, most of the questions come from energy and power signal only. They give some signal and they ask us to calculate, uh, find the energy and power of this signal. So we will see how to calculate energy and power of signal. So we have already studied the energy is given as, as the integration of xt square dt from minus infinite to infinite. So this is the formula of energy for the continuous time signal. This is for continuous time signal. Now what is continuous time signal? The signal which is continuous in the time domain. Like you can see our sign T. This is a continuous signal. Because for all value of T. The sign T is defined. Okay then the energy of continuous time signal is given as the ever formula understood now when there is a discrete signal let's suppose uh, this was the sin t continuous time signal and if you feel any difficulty or any doubt in between then uh, you can ask Now let's suppose there are some signals which is discrete in time domain like 
it is the it is as a sequence or it is in series form like let's suppose for uh, n is equal to 0 it is defined for n is equal to 1 it is defined for n is equal to 2 it is defined but it is not defined for all the value in the time domain like uh, between 0 to 1 it is only defined on 0 and 1 not on 0 0.5 0 0.2 so such kind of signals are called as discrete signal How do we get the energy of discrete signal? That is given as summation of xn square here n tends to minus infinite to infinite. We know that uh, discrete signal is defined as xn, like this is our xn and this is our xt. So basically, in um, Continuous time signal, what we do? We do integration from minus infinite to infinite. And in discrete time signal, we do summation. So both are same. Like integration also just sum up all the areas between the curve. And here, we just give the summation sign for the discrete time signal. Okay. So this was the formula to calculate the energy of a signal. Like here is a signal given that is sine t. This is a periodic signal. Okay. So when you do x square t here, this negative term will also become like I will draw the diagram here. X square of t. Let's suppose x t is equal to sine t. Then the negative term will also become positive. So our curve will be like this. Okay. Now tell me if you do the integration from minus infinite to infinite, let's suppose the integration of x square t dt minus infinite to infinite, what will be the value? You can unmute yourself also. Yeah, Surajit, I will surely discuss get. Uh, uh, 20, uh, 23 questions. Oh, I have to see the paper first. Up to 2022, I have questions, so I can discuss those. But I will discuss 23 questions also. Uh, I will check on internet. If question paper is released, I will surely discuss in the next lecture or like. I can discuss question related to signal system communication also because these areas are related. So here when you integrate it, you will get infinite because see, when you sum all the values, it is from minus infinite to infinite and all values are positive. So the, all the positive areas, if you sum it, you will get infinite. So this signal is not an energy signal. So for such kind of periodic signal, what we have to find? We have to find power, not an energy signal. So this is a power signal. So we have to calculate power of this signal. Okay. For periodic signal. We calculate power. Okay. Because periodic signals are not the energy signal. So now we will see the formula for calculating power. Like for still students are joining. And am I audible? Like my voice are clear and uh, everything clear, right? Okay, so the power of a continuous time signal is given as minus t by 2 to t by 2. like this so what is here the capital minus t by 2 to t by 2 that is the uh, time period of a signal here you see let's suppose this is our t by 2 and this is our minus t by 2 so 
this complete minus t by 2 t by up to t by 2 is the time period of this signal. So power is calculated for one time period. So we are integrating um, the signal means first we do the square of the signal and the magnitude of that is integrated in the one time period. So using this we get the power of a signal. Okay. So this was for a continuous time signal. When you come for discrete time signal, let's suppose one time period is existing from minus n to n. Then what we will divide here? Here we will divide by 2n plus 1 because let's suppose this is our discrete time signal. Let's suppose from minus 3 to 3, uh, that is a one time period, okay? So this is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Let's suppose 2 to minus 2 is the one time period. And we will just keep some variation in this curve. Let's suppose this is the one time period like this. So here you see there are five instances. It requires five instances. It is from minus two to two. But here 0 is also counted, okay? That's why we have done 2n plus 1 is the time period for this. So we have divided it by 2n plus 1 because here n is 2, so you will do 2 into 2 plus 1 is the time period, so it will be 5. That is equal to 2n plus 1. That's why we have divided by 2n plus 1. So never forget this. Sometimes a student do this silly mistakes in examination and commit mistakes. Most of the students do 1 by 2n and just calculate the power. Okay. So don't repeat this. Any doubt up to here? Any doubt up to here, then we will go to some of the note points based on the energy and power of a signal. So here we have seen like this kind of a periodic signal that is sine t have the infinite energy. So when the signal is having infinite energy, then that signal is not, uh, not called as energy signal. Okay. So energy signal is having the finite energy okay, and zero power. So here we can write some note point. First we write the signals having infinite energy and infinite power are neither energy signals nor power signals. Sometimes what happens when you do the, uh, when you calculate the power, then you may get infinite value for power also. Just like in this case, when we calculated the power for sine t, we got here infinite. So this is not an energy signal. Similarly, when you get for both the energy and 
like both the energy and power as the infinite value then that is neither an energy signal nor a power signal okay uh, sometimes it asks in examination that uh, whether this signal is energy signal or power signal okay so energy signal is ha always having finite energy it always have finite energy understood and it have also zero power let's see how it is having zero power let's suppose there is an energy signal like this okay this is one and this is time axis and this is our amplitude axis so now if you calculate the power of this energy signal what will be the energy here xt square dt let's suppose this is square only for easy of calculation because this i want to teach some concept this is also 1, this is also minus 1. So, what will be the energy of this signal? That is xt square dt. So, here we will get. So, from minus infinite to minus 1, the value is 0. Okay. So, here we will keep minus 1 and also up to 1 only because from 1 to infinite, the value is 0. And xt is 1 between minus 1 to 1. So, what will be the xt square? That will be 1 only. So we'll get we will get one into two that is equal to two. Now when you calculate the power of this signal, okay, power of this mt. So what is the time period of this signal? What is time period? Like after some in instances when a signal repeats itself, that is the time period. Like this is our time period. If some signal is like this. It is repeating so on continuously. Then this is our time period. T minus ty2 ty2 is one time period, so that will be t. T is our time period in this case. But here it is not repeating, so the time period is infinite. Now when you calculate power, see the formula is 1 by t here. So it will become 1 by infinite summation minus infinite by 2 to infinite by 2 and the magnitude square is 1 dt so you will get and this signal is uh, from uh, minus 1 to 1 only so this limit will change again minus 1 to 1 so you will get here 2 by infinite that is equal to 0. So just remember this point the energy signal is always having 0 power. Okay, and there is some chat also, comment also in the chat box. One second for. In between, if you get any doubt, you can unmute yourself and ask also because I may miss the chats in between. Okay. So, just remember this point that energy signal is having finite energy, zero power, and also it is finite duration. See, these all are energy signals. So, these all are having finite duration. Okay. When it is in finite duration, then we have to just calculate the uh, energy. If it is non periodic, then only it may be energy signal. If it is periodic, then it will be a power signal. Okay. And for infinite duration also there are some energy signal like when you 
this is the curve of e to the power minus t but when you do e to the power minus t into ut then it will be for positive value only what is ut here unit step function so i will take in the another page after that i will write that point what is unit step function for all the negative value it will be zero and for from zero to t is up to infinite it will be one so this is our unit step function so it is named as unit step because at zero it is taking one step that is the value of one so unit step is defined as ut is equal to zero for t is less than zero and ut is equal to one for t is greater than or equal to zero at t is equal to zero the value is not defined like it can be from zero to one anywhere but uh, some of uh, some of, in some of the question you can find that uh, if they give option then you can just sum it and divide that will be average of it that will be 1 by 2 but in actually it is not defined at zero but here in the question it is given ut is equal to 1 for t is equal to also 0 so in this case if they ask what is the value of ut at t is equal to 0 then it will be 1 so just see all the limits and cases then accordingly you answer now our et is given as e to the power minus t is given as like this e to the power minus t now next is e to the power minus t into ut this is our unit step function this thing you must have studied in the week one lecture i am just uh, teaching something extra apart from the nptl lectures and this is our exponentially decaying function Now when you multiply it for all the value where t is less than 0 what it will be it will be 0 because 0 into something will be 0 and now from here this is e to the power minus t for this is 0 for t is greater than 0 and multiplied by 1 we will get same as e to the power minus t so this is our e t into u t e to the power minus t into u t. Now find the energy of this curve. Just calculate and answer me in the chat box. They simply use the formula this formula you use energy is equal to xt square dt that is from minus infinite to infinite and this is infinite duration sigma When t tends to infinite, e to the power minus t into ut, that will become 0. 1 by 2 joules. Okay, so let's check. That is equal to minus infinite to infinite, e to the power minus t ut square dt. So it will become from 0 to infinite e to the power minus 2t dt. Okay. So when you integrate it, will you will get e to the power minus 2t divided by 
minus 2 that is from infinite to 0 and this energy will be like always the positive quantity so we have to take the mod of this okay so when you do you will get e to the power minus infinite is 1 sorry this is 0 e to the power minus 2t so that will be 0 minus when t is equal to 0 it will be minus 1 by 2 so here it will get 1 by 2 as the answer so correct it will be half joule so for this question see for infinite duration signal also energy may be finite so just we have to write this important point zero power finite duration signals are the energy signals but if it is infinite duration then value tending to zero as t tends to infinite are energy signal also so just write this point infinite duration with value tending to zero as t tends to infinite are also energy signals okay so this was about energy signal now take a note about power signal let me check the chat box yeah many of you answered half to correct it's good that you guys are also solving yourself it will generate your problem solving skills it will help you in all the competitive exams as well now coming to the notes point for the power signal so power signal have infinite energy that we have already seen here in the examples of uh, this uh, sine t here you can see here we have seen that when this is a power signal so when you calculate the energy of power signal you will get infinite that's why um, power is calculated between one time periods so here you just write the note point it have infinite power signals have infinite energy and it will have finite power obviously finite power signal have finite power and power signals are also periodic signals Okay, so I have lots of questions. I have written below. We'll solve one, we'll solve one by one these questions also. We can solve this question first. Like it is given if a signal FT has energy E, and this is a previous year gate question, but asked long back. So that that's why it is very easy question. Nowadays, the standard of gate has increased a lot. So if if a signal F T has the energy E, the energy of the signal F two T is equal to. Uh, I have got some answers. Option C, that is two E. Let's see. We'll solve. So energy is minus infinite to infinite integration of 
f t square dt so now we have to find the energy of f 2 t okay so here what we'll take we'll take let's suppose uh, t is equal to 2 t okay then we'll get dp is equal to 2 into dt understood so now we will substitute f square p dt is equal to dp by 2 from here so we will get half and this is our e1 just this is a variable p you can change it by t also in integration you can change the variable by t also there is nothing change in the value so this is equal to e1 so et is equal to half of e1 understood so option b is the correct option yeah some of you have written option c no it is option b anyway it's good that you are trying so just write one formula this i have solved uh, but you can write a direct formula also energy of signal at energy of signal at that will become that will be divided by a okay so here we have proved also how it will become just substitute 2t is equal to some another variable as p and after that you will get e2 is equal to half of e1 so in this way so option b is the correct option and uh, like most of the students have joined uh, recently now so for them this video will be uploaded on youtube the link will be shared in the nptl portal so don't worry so till now we have discussed about the energy of real signal let's suppose a complex signal is there what will be the formula what are complex signal like signals in the form of x plus i y here i is iota that is under root minus one okay these are complex signals and also like e to the power j theta this is also no, can be written as cos theta plus j sin theta these are the example of complex signals as we have already studied in week one so energy of complex signal is calculated as in real signal it was ft square but here we will do ft into conjugate of ft okay and integrate it with dt for real signal ft is equal to ft conjugate so that's why this will become ft squared okay understood actually this is the main formula ft into ft conjugate but for real signal ft is equal to ft conjugate and for power this is for the real signal that ft square so here what will it will become just we have to change it by ft into ft conjugate okay for real signal this becomes ft square So any doubt up to here?
any doubt then you can unmute yourself and ask okay so we will solve some of the some more questions And let's take this question. So here the function xt is shown in the figure. Even an odd part of unit is a function ut respectively. Okay. Even an odd part of a unit function. Well, let me check the question is correct or not. So this is from get book only. Even an odd part of the expectancy here. Huh, so they are asking like uh, to find the even and odd part of a unit step function ut that depends on this function xt. So what is the odd and even part? We know that even part of any signal is xt. Uh, here you will get confused by xt. So let's take yt. yt plus y minus t by 2 and odd part is equal to yt minus y of minus t by 2 okay so in this case it is asking even and odd parts of a unit step function so our unit step function is like this this is our unit step function Someone write no or not. Okay. So this is our unit step function ut. Now, what will be the value of u minus t? The curve of u minus t that will be in this direction. How? Because see ut is equal to 1 for t is greater than 0 and 0 for t is less than 0. Now for u minus t when it will be positive when t is negative okay so it will be 1 when t is less than equal to 0 and 0 when t is greater than 0 okay because when you substitute t is equal to minus 5 here, then it will become minus, minus 5, it will become u of 5. What is u of 5? That is 1. Understood? That's why the curve of u minus t will be like this. So, the even part even part will be ut plus u of minus t by 2. This is a formula for even part. This is a formula for odd part. Understood? So here when you add this, you will get the curve as this is even part. So we will get this is also 1. So you will get 1 by 2. Okay? Because uh, when t is also greater than 0, it is 1. When t is less than 0, that is also 1. So when you add it, these two signals and divide it by 2, you will get it as half. Okay. Now the odd part of this, it will become ut minus u of minus t by 2. So, when you do subtraction of this, you will get ut. This is our ut. So, 
it will be like this only minus of minus of u minus t so it will so the minus of when you do minus here this will shift to downside like below the x axis understood so the curve will be like this and divided by 2 so it will be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 in 0 now the odd part is just the half of xt because see this is our xt curve it is just minus 1 for all the negative value and 1 for all the positive value here it is minus half for all the negative value and half for all the positive value so odd of the unit uh, step signal is half of xt so what will be the correct answer the even part is half and the odd part is half of xt so we have to just derive the even and odd part of unit step function on the basis of xt okay so option a is the correct answer in for this question any doubt yeah someone uh, already wrote option one it is correct any doubt up to here I will see some more questions. If you have any doubt, then you can unmute also and ask. Not an issue. If you this two is the same question, I will delete it. okay based on the previous question just we have just we can write the note points like even and odd signal this you have already studied in the week one lecture we'll just cover most of the concept by solving questions itself which part Okay, just let me discuss this concept, then you will, then again I will go to that question. Okay. So, even an odd signal is given as like this. Ft is equal to f of minus t. So, Ft is equal to f of minus t. So, this is our even or symmetric signal. Like whenever like you see this signal this is our even signal why because for t is let's suppose some positive x f t is equal to f of minus t let's suppose t is equal to here 2 then you see at uh, t is equal to 2 and minus 2 this f t is equal when you take t is equal to 3 then at t is equal to 3 and minus 3, ft is equal. So, these kind of signals are even signal and symmetric signal. When ft is equal to minus of f minus t, this is known as odd signal or anti-symmetric signal. The example of odd signal is Do you know any example? Just write in the chat box. That is sine t. Here you can see
let's suppose this is our pi by 2 and this is our minus pi by 2. So what is the definition of uh, odd function? This is sine t. That is odd signal. F t is equal to minus of f minus t. Here you can check. Let's suppose t is equal to pi by 2. Then f of pi by 2 is equal to 1. Okay, and f of minus pi by 2 that is equal to minus 1. How these two can be related? f of pi by 2 is equal to minus of f of minus pi by 2. So you can see this is following this definition. This means this is the odd function. So in this way, we can just find what is odd function and what is even function. Now coming to any signal f t any signal f t can be represented as the summation of odd and even signal. So the odd part of that like so f t can be represented as f of e t that is the even f e t is the even signal and f of o t that is the odd signal. So here f e t will be f t plus f of minus t by 2 and f o t that is the odd part is f t minus f of minus t by 2. So using this uh, concept only we have solved the previous question. Uh, this was our previous question. I will repeat because some of you have asked. So here it is given to find the even and odd part of the unit step function u t. And the options are given like this. Options are based on xt. So the even part of uh, ut will be ut plus, here you can see, plus u minus t by 2 as we have seen in the formula. Even part is ft plus f minus t by 2. So when you do ut plus u minus t, you will get the curve. Like if you add these two, you will get curve like this all value will be 1 from minus infinite to infinite. But divided by 2 is also here. So you will get 1 by 2. So this is our even part. Understood? Now when you do odd part that is ft minus f minus t by 2. So this is ut here. When you subtract minus of u minus t, this will go down to the x-axis and you will get curve like this when you divide it by 2 here. So we will get minus 1 by 2 like. Now see u naught t is equal to u naught t equal to half for x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus half for x is less than 0. And here you can see x t is equal to 1 for x is greater than or equal to 0 minus 1 for x is less than 0. So ut is just a half of xt. Okay. So ut is just a half of xt. So which option is correct? Even part is half here. We have calculated even part is half. You can see an odd part of unit step function is half of xt. So option A is correct. Understood? I guess it is clear now after writing this concept. Okay, so now we will see about impulse function. These questions are repeated. I will delete it. Just wait. Yes. 
Okay. Now you'll see about impulse function that is denoted as del t. This is one of the important function in single line system. Most of the question will be based on impulse or unit step. Unit step is a little easy to calculate because it has simply a one as a value. But when it comes impulse, you have to be a little careful because it is calculated based on the area. So what is impulse function? Del t is equal to one when t is equal to zero. It is zero for otherwise. This is just a simple definition, but we will see what actually it is. This is let's suppose epsilon by 2, this is negative epsilon by 2 and this will be 1 by epsilon. So this is the definition of uh, like impulse function means the area should be equal to 1. So whatever is the width, here the width is epsilon because e by 2 minus of minus e by 2 will be e and to get the area as 1 what will be the height of this e into 1 by e is equal to 1 okay in this only limit e tends to 0 okay delta t is equal to Sorry, here it will be, uh, it won't be 1 here, it will be infinite only, yes, I will write it again, don't worry, first let me discuss the concept. So, here del t, when e tends to 0, del t will be 1 by e, okay when e tends to 0. So this means it will be a simply a function at e is equal to 0 the value is infinite only. But when you integrate it like integration of del t dt from minus infinite to infinite the area will be 1 because let's suppose this is our uh, uh, let it make it more clear like this, more narrow will make, this is minus e by 2, this is e by 2 and this is 1 by e. So what will be the area of this when you integrate, integration over minus infinite to infinite, it will be minus e by 2 to e by 2, 1 by e into dt, okay. 1 by e into e by 2 minus minus of e that is equal to e. So, area will be 1. So, always you remember this formula integration of del t dt that is equal to 1. Okay. So, we will see some of the properties of impulse function. One by epsilon portion. Actually, see whenever e tends to 0. this 1 by e will become infinite. So, when you just uh, make this uh, curve closer like when e by 2 tends to 0, at that time, at that time this there will be impulse at t is equal to 0, okay? Because the value is 1 by e. So, when epsilon tends to 0, 1 by e tends to infinite. So, the magnitude here will be infinite, okay? So, we will just see some of the properties of this impulse function.
this weight. We will solve lots of questions also based on this. Let me check the question. If you have any doubt till now, then you can ask. Is there any question based on inputs? There are previous year assignments also that also I can solve, but those questions are very easy as compared to gate standards. That's why I'm solving uh, question based on uh, previous year gate only. Okay. So some of the properties we will write. Just wait for a minute. I have written some properties in a note. This you must have already studied in the lecture itself. Del of a t, like when it is time is scaled by a, it will become one by a del t. Okay. And the area will be how much? One by a. Here you can see. Let's suppose this is our del t. Now we have to find the area of 1 by a del t. So area is equal to 1 by a of del t dt. So this is a constant, it will come out. Area of del t dt is equal to 1. Like here it will be del t dt. So this value is 1. So it will be 1 by a. Okay, mod a. So these are some of the basic properties here. You can go through. The second is sampling properties like Ft del t is equal to F naught into del t. Okay. And Ft del t minus a is equal to Fa. del t minus a why it is like this see del t is zero at all other values except t is not equal to zero so whenever you multiply f t into del t when t is not equal to zero it will become zero So that's why only at t is equal to 0, these things can be calculated. So that's why here we have kept t is equal to 0. Okay. And f t del t minus again. Now del t minus a, what will be the curve? Someone will write now. Let's suppose this is our del t curve what will del t minus a it will be shifted by a so it will become like this at a it will be this is a curve of del t minus a so at what value of uh, t f will exist when you multiply this at only t is equal to a that's why we have shifted 
we have kept t is equal to a because at all other values del t minus a is zero so when you multiply it it will become zero so these two properties are very easy just you can think by common sense also you will get So now we can integrate this and see what will be the answer. That is also, this is known as sampling properties or namesake you can write. And these uh, like, uh, this can be your short notes also, like whatever I am teaching. So I will also upload this PDF and you will get the link in the NPTEL portal. So these things, uh, if you have not noted down in your notebook, then you can directly download from NPTEL portal. Okay. Now another is the shifting property that is the integration of this ever thing, whatever it was. So when you integrate, f t dot del t dt. So what will be the value? We know that f t dot del t is f naught into del t into dt okay now f naught is a constant so we can take it out this f naught is constant so we can take it out it will become f naught into del t dt and what is the value of this this is one okay t is there from minus infinite to infinite sorry i forgot to write this so this value is one so this will be equal to f naught. Okay. So just write it here. Minus infinite to infinite. F t del t. Integrated with respect to t. Is equal to f naught. Okay. Similarly when you shift it. impulse function by t by a what will be the value it will be f a because just use this uh, third one you will get okay but f t del t minus a is f a into del t minus a we just follow the same step what we have done ever you will get this value that is equal to f a okay And this is a scaling property that we have already discussed. And one more thing is there, like when del a t plus minus b is there, then it will become 1 by a del of t plus minus this b is also divided by a. Okay. So this is done. Now we will see some of the important relation between unit. Uh, till now, if you have any doubt, then you can ask. Do you have any doubt? If you have any doubt, then you can ask me either in the chat box or you can unmute yourself.
Okay. So now we will see relation between uh, unit step function, impulse function, and ramp function. There is one more function that I will first discuss. That is RT ramp function. This is like for t less than 0 to 0 and after that it is like x is equal to y or x is equal to t here because x axis is t. This is our x. So you can just write the definition for RT is equal to T for T is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for T is less than 0. So this is our ramp function. Oh sorry. I have disconnected just wait for a minute. Hmm. Okay, so this is our RAM function. So it is just like a stair. So after t is greater than or equal to 0, rt is equal to t, and rt is equal to 0 for t is less than 0. Okay, and what is our unit step function? ut that is equal to let's draw everything here and we will find the relation between all three important functions okay so the first one is our ram function Now second is unit step. So this is 0 for all the negative value of t and it is 1 for all the positive value of t. One for t is greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t is less than 0. Next is impulse function. So here del t it is equal to 0 for all the t value which is non-zero and it is not defined it is infinite or you can say not defined at t is equal to zero it is infinite or whatever you can say but always when you do the area that is equal to what okay so now you see when you just uh, do the derivative of rt what you will get? You will get ut. How? Let's check. When you means when you do the derivative of RT, that is the RAM function. This is our RT, this is our ut, and this is our delta. So derivative of RAM is ut. How? Huh? Because whenever it is negative, it is just a constant value, so derivative will be 0. 
and here you can see the derivative will be dt by t that is equal to 1 for t is greater than 0 d of rt will be dt by dt that is equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0 and derivative of 0 is 0 so it is like this so it will become unit step function so this is our derivative of rt that is equal to ut okay now when you integrate ut what you will get integration of ut dt see you can break this integration from minus infinite to 0 that is equal to 0 into dt plus 0 to infinite that is 1 into dt so here you will get this is 0 because the integration is 0 is 0 it has gone Hmm. let's not find the final value so remove this limit and this is 0 plus integration of 1 into dt is t so so it will be t here when t is equal to 0 to infinite okay so this is simply our when you integrate ut you will get rt so this is just for like knowing how it came so you can directly here write integration of ut dt that is equal to ramp of t okay so when you integrate this you will get the ramp similarly Unless you write this things. These are the important ones. Okay. Now, what you will get when you derive the delta, like when you derive the unit step function? You will get impulse function because see when you do derivative of ut see uh, for negative value of t it is constant zero so it will be zero like this and at t is equal to zero it is like sudden suddenly it is jumping so it will become impulse that will be infinite value and again for t is greater than 0 it is a constant value so derivative of constant is 0 so this is equal to del t understood so these are the relation between the del t ut and rt you must be knowing about this also, we can see for discrete time signal because it will be helpful. Now it is going back. So. This was for the continuous time signal. Now you see for discrete time signal. For discrete time signal, what is our UM? Zero, one, two. For all this value, it will become one and for the negative value, it will be 0. Okay. So, un is equal to 1 for n is greater than or equal to 0. And n is also an integer. 
and it will become zero for n is less than zero. Okay, and n is a here integer value. Now, this is our u n. Now, what is u n minus one? This will become like we have to shift it one unit rightwards. This is here minus one, minus two, minus three, so on. So it will become zero minus one. This is our curve of u and minus one. Now let's do one thing, simple thing. Let's subtract it like u n minus u of n minus one. What we will get? See all the terms like from one to infinite in positive will cancel out because this one and this one, this will get minus. Okay, so we will get all terms from 1, 2, 3 will become 0. Okay, at n is equal to 0, what will be the value? This is 1, here it is 0. Here you can see it is 0. It will 1 minus 0 will be 1. And again for all the negative value it will be 0. So this is the curve of un minus un minus 1. So this is our impulse function. So here you can see in the previous case, the derivative of ut was impulse. Here you can see un minus un minus 1. This is also one of the symbol of derivative in discrete domain. This un minus This un minus un minus 1 is also a derivative in discrete domain. So, this is our impulse function. Okay. Any doubt up to here? Similarly, we will see for Rn. Let's suppose Rn that is ramp function. In discrete domain, so I don't know why this PPT is sliding. Away. So it will be let me draw with red pen. This is zero. So this is our RM function. Okay, that is the RAM function. What is the value at 1? Rn is equal to 1, here 2, here 3, here 4. Now, we know that the derivative of uh, RAM function is ut. So, here also what we will do, we will do Rn minus Rn minus 1. And let's see what we get. So, this is our R and minus 1. So, it will be shifted by 1, min, one unit rightwards. So, this is 0. This is again 1. What are the values? 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Now you do, do just the subtraction Rn minus Rn minus 1. You will get up to 0 it will be 0 like for all the negative values. 
all values are zero here. Now at one, it will be one. At two, it will be like here will be two minus one, that is one. And at three, it will be like this. So, on. so here you can see the derivative of R n, the R n minus R n minus 1 is giving us as a ram function but there is one misconfusion here you can get that this one started from 1 so actually we can do it like this r n plus 1 minus r n when you do r n plus 1 minus r n so don't get confused here. I will write it again. Now this is Rn minus R minus 1. This is also impulse function only, the unit step function only, because between 0 to 1, like at 0, it is not defined. Here you can see at 0, it is not defined. But when you take here R n plus 1 minus R n, you will get R n plus 1 will be like at 0, you will get here 1. That is not a unit step function in uh, discrete domain, but this is our unit step function that is un. Okay. So here you will get at 0, 1, at 1, 2, at 2, 3, so on. This is our R n plus 1. What is our R n? That will be at 0, it will be 0. At 1, it will be 1. At 2, it will be 2. At 3, it will be 3. Now, when you do the subtraction of these two, you will get We'll draw it down up to minus one, it is zero. Now at zero, that is one minus zero, that will be one. At one, it will be two minus one, that will be equal to one. At two, you can say it is two, and here it is three. So three minus two is that is equal to one. So, so this is our unit step function that is R n plus 1 minus R n that is equal to U n. So, here also we can see the derivative of RAM that is like um, when you do R n plus 1 minus R n that is derivative in discrete domain. So, that is equal to unit step function. Same in the time domain also you can see here derivative of R t is equal to U t. Here you can see. So these are some of the basic relationship between uh, this RAM, unit step function and impulse function. Now we know that integration of UT is uh, like uh, impulse response is unit step function. So here we can write, I will write it now everything. You can expand and proof like how we have done. Or you can write like this also. U n. See here. This this summation del n minus k k tending from zero to infinite. How it will be? Like del n will be like this at zero. Del n minus one will be. Like it will be shifted by one minute. So at one, it will be like this. 
this is one this is one again del n minus 2 it will be shifted by two units rightward so you will get at two here so when you add all these you will get u n okay So understood. So here you can see the summation of uh, impulse function gives the unit step function in continuous time also we have seen that integration of del t dt is equal to 1. So this is the area but uh, when you do the integration of this impulse function you will get 1. So here you can see you, if you do the derivative of ut you are getting del t. So now you can take it like this d of ut is equal to del t dt. Now integrate both the side you will get ut is equal to integration of del t dt. Same you can see in the discrete domain also that is the summation of impulse response function. We will see some of the questions. Like we can see some of the question based on power only. Uh, this is a very simple question. You can answer nice. Like for today, whatever concepts we have covered, we'll keep it up to here. And you can solve lots of questions. If you feel any doubt in the next lecture, also you can ask me. There is no issue. Like from this uh, lecture, also you can ask me the doubt. And all the videos will be uploaded on YouTube and also the PDF of this lecture will be uploaded on YouTube. There also you can see and you can ask the question on YouTube comment also. Uh, I will be answering there. So this question can you answer what will be the power of this uh, signal? In the next lecture we will also see how to calculate the uh, like uh, what do you say time period of this uh, continuous and discrete time signal okay today we have already taken one and half hour what is the time so we'll take 20 more minutes and we'll finish it off today so the power in the signal st 8 cos 2 pi t minus pi by 2 plus 4 sine 15 pi t we can write st as 8 cos minus theta is equal to cos theta we know this so we can write it as cos pi by 2 minus 20 pi t plus 4 sin 15 pi t so we will get 8 sin 20 pi t plus 4 sin 15 pi t so this is simple uh, we know that for a uh, sinusoidal signal the power is AC square by 2 that is 8 square by 2 plus 4 square by 2 that is equal to 32 plus 8 40. Yeah, correct. 40 is the correct answer for this. I don't know why this question got copied again and again. So the next question is two sequences x1 and x2 n have the same energy. Suppose x1 n is equal to alpha 0 0.5 n un. So this is I think gate question where alpha is a positive real number and un is the unit step sequence. So then the find the value of alpha. Solve this question. This was asked in, I think, gate 2015. So, in this question, let me only solve. If you get the answer, then you can just write in the chat box. Some 
YouTube link uh, I guess I I have not uploaded this video first. I have to I have I'm just recording it. Let me check whether this video is getting recorded. Yeah. I'm recording it. So after that I will upload. You will get in NPTEL portal and from next lecture I will just give the YouTube channel link. Then you will get and means while I'm taking the lecture only you will get. In next lecture I will provide my YouTube channel link so you will get the video from there itself because till now I have not uploaded any video there that's all. So in this question it is given two sequences are there like this x1n and x2n that is a discrete signal have the same energy. So what is the energy formula for This is the formula for energy of any uh, discrete signal. First we will find energy of uh, x2 and e2 that is equal to summation of here you can see n2 is under root of 1.5 for n is equal to 0 and 1 and it is 0 for all other value. So it will be uh, 0 plus 0 plus 0 at n is equal to 0 it will be 1 under root of 1.5 square that will be 1.5 plus at 1 also it will be 1.5 plus 0 0 0. So the e2 will be 3. Okay. Now coming to the next part that is E1. So this will be still some students are joining. X1 is uh, that is alpha square. 0 0.5 to the power 2n un n is equal to minus infinite to infinite 1.5 let me check i need to add one extra page below just wait hmm. so here our e1 is equal to Alpha square is a constant, so we'll take it out. And here it is a un, so un is uh, zero for all the negative value of n. So we'll keep n is equal to zero to infinite. Zero point five is one by two to the power two n. That is one to the power four by n. Like this. Now we know that summation of uh, like any series here. You can see here that is 1 by 4 plus 1 by no, this will be like summation of 1 by 4 to the power n, n is equal to 0 to infinite will be 1 by 4 to the power 0, that is 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 16 plus dot 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 dot. So, here this is the first term a is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 by 4. So what is the value of this? A by 1 minus R. This is the value of this summation. Am I correct? Ha, this is correct. So A is here 1 and R is 1 by 4. So what will be the value? 1 by some people have joined too late. 4 minus 1 that is 3 by 4. So this is equal to 4 by 3. So E1 is equal to alpha squared into 4 by 3. In this question what it is given? Two sequence have the same energy. So E1 is equal to E2. This is given in this question. And our E2 is 3. 
so alpha square into 4 by 3 is equal to 3 alpha square is equal to 9 by 4 is implied that alpha is equal to 3 by 2 that is 1.5 we are correct so the value of alpha is 1.5 Okay, we have two more questions left, so these two will solve and finish it off for today. So here, Ft, you have any doubt in the last question, then you can ask. Do you have any doubt here? Okay, in this question, we have to find the fundamental time period in second. So, here our Ft is given as 1 plus 2 cos pi t plus 3 sin 2 pi by 3 t plus 4 cos pi by 2 t plus pi by 4. So, all these are final final signals. And it is in the form of cos omega t or sin omega t. So here, what is the value of omega here? Omega naught is equal to pi. Omega 1 is equal to 2 pi by 3. And omega 3 is equal to pi by, sorry, omega 2 is equal to pi by 2. So for getting the, like for getting the value, like uh, the fundamental time period, we have to get the greatest common divisor of these three. Like whatever is the individual time period of each, uh, in the, like greatest common divisor of these omega values. First, so this will be the, let's suppose omega t. So this will be equal to GCD of pi 2 pi by 3 and pi by 2 whenever uh, such things comes it will become you do the uh, gcf of numerator and lcf of denominator lcm of denominator when you have to find the gcd of uh, rational number then you do like this so what is the G gcf of numerator that is uh, pi because pi can divide uh, all these three and what is the LCM of denominator 3 and 2? That is equal to 3 into 2, that is 6. So, omega t is equal to pi by 6. So, how do we find the fundamental time period? There is a formula. In next lecture, I will uh, just give the brief introduction because today already time is over. That is 2 pi by omega t. It will be 2 pi by pi by 6. So you will get 12. The fundamental time period for this signal is 12 seconds. Okay. What is like time period? Whenever the signal xt, when xt plus t is equal to xt, so here t is the time period of this signal xt. Yeah, there are lots of shortcut. Uh, I will discuss few questions. I will uh, make a brief note. In the next lecture, I will just uh, discuss about that. There are very good, good shortcuts for calculating time periods. So this is one of them I have discussed in the question. In next lecture also, I will discuss two, three questions based on time period. Any doubt here? So now we will move on to the last question of today's lecture. So this is like a little mix of two, three things.
If you have any doubt up to now, then you can ask. So we'll discuss the last question for today. Like in this question, a signal XT is uh, given in the parallel combination of two LTI system, linear time invariant system. I think this question is like little above from the week one, but still we can discuss. Or shall we discuss in the next week? Because you should first uh, know the convolution properties of delta t and all. I think this question we can discuss next week because uh, this requires the convolution proper, um, properties also and you have not studied uh, convolution till now. So even if I will teach now, you will not understand. Because in this question, it was asking to find the energy of signal yt. That's why I kept this question. This is, I guess, gate 2018 question. Anyway, next uh, in next lecture, we will study this because now if I will teach you, you may not get because it requires yt is equal to xt convolution of ht. So this convolution property and all you have not studied. So directly you will not understand the concept. So for today, we will stop here only. If you have any doubt in the previous question, just let ask me. If you made the notes, then you can ask me. And even this video will be uploaded on YouTube as well as the PDF of this uh, lecture, like this lecture note will be also uploaded on the link will be given on NPTEL portal. So you can get from there. And thank you everyone for attending today's class. So we can leave now. If you have any doubt, then you can ask. You can unmute yourself if you have any doubt. Anoni is speaking. Okay, if no doubt, then uh, we can stop the lecture here. Thank you everyone for attending. We'll meet next Monday, 5 to 7 p.m. And we'll discuss like this only, we'll get questions and uh, some of the concept based on that question we'll discuss. Okay, because this is just a tutorial session. So we cannot keep it theoretical session fully, like fully conceptual. So we have to keep question as well as concept. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Sir. Sir. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, did yes. ask. Hello? Ah, yes, ask. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, again where the last this question thank you this one sir a last question mm -hmm. okay this question oh yes sir uh, actually in this question we have to it is given that both the signal x1 and an x2 and have the same energy so uh, we have to find the value of alpha. So what we will do first, we will find the uh, energy of signal x1 n. First, we will find the energy of x1 n. Then we will find the energy of x2 n. We will equate both that because it is given both have same energy. And after that, we will get the value of alpha. So when we calculated E2, so we know that the energy of discrete signal is xn squared summation n is equal to minus infinite to infinite. Yeah, ask. Dheeraj. Ah, yes, so here we have done the summation. So x2, x2 is given under root 1.5 for n is equal to 0 and 1. So we got the square of under root 1.5 is that is 1.5 plus 1.5. So energy of second signal is 3. Energy of first signal is x1 squared into n. So we have a squared this that is alpha squared and 0 0.5 to the power 2n. And un squared is un only. But un is equal to 
zero for n is less than zero. That's why we have uh, shifted the the summation lower limit n is equal to zero to infinite because for n is less than zero, u n is zero, and this alpha square is constant, so it came out here. And this is 0 0.5 is half, half to the power 2n is equal to 1, to 1 by 4 to the power n. And this is just an AP series. Here the first term is a is equal to 1. And the ratio between the first and second term is 1 by 4. So the summation of this kind of AP series is a by 1 minus r. So this we will get 1 by 1 minus 1 by 4 that is, is equal to 4 by 3. So, energy of first signal is alpha square into 4 by 3. So, when you create it, you will get alpha is equal to 1.5. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next week, if I will find any question from gate 23 in signal and system, and that too from the first two chapter, then I will discuss. Anyway, up to end of this tutorial session, like it will go for 12 week, I will discuss the gate 23 question, all the question of signal and system and communication as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir.